the Federal Reserve's reverse repo facility has garnered significant attention over the past few years, and rightfully so. This video will reveal that contrary to its previous stagnation, the facility's balances are now projected to decline towards zero. We'll explore why this trend is significant and the broader implications for both the economy and financial markets. Introduced in March 2021, following the expiration of the Supplementary Leverage Ratio Suspension, the Reverse Repo Facility quickly became a critical tool for banks. This suspension's end increased banks' need for adequate collateral to balance their deposits or liabilities. To avoid banks flooding the market with purchases of T-bills at near-zero rate, which could have driven rates negative, the Federal Reserve offered an attractive alternative. Banks could park their excess cash at the reverse repo facility, earning a modest interest rate while receiving the necessary collateral in return. This arrangement led to an influx of approximately $2.3 trillion into the facility by May 2023. Financial institutions, including banks and money market funds, found this option appealing. It provided a risk-free return that was competitive with or superior to the federal funds rate with high liquidity and no requirement for the cash to be locked in for extended periods unlike T-bills. However, the situation began to shift mid-2023. The Federal Reserve's consistent rate hikes eventually made U.S. government short-term borrowing more costly, with rates rising to about 5.4%. This borrowing typically occurs through Treasury bills or T-bills, which, as of now, offer returns of around 5 to 5.2%. For cash holders, three primary concerns dictate their investment decisions maximizing interest returns, ensuring liquidity to access funds as needed, and minimizing risk to protect their capital. For several years, the reverse repo facility met these needs effectively. However, changes in the economic and rate landscapes are reshaping where and how institutions choose to allocate their cash reserves. As the U.S. government began offering a 5.4% interest rate for short-term borrowing spanning one to two months, it shifted the dynamics to cash holders. Investors with cash reserves saw an opportunity to earn a higher return by slightly sacrificing liquidity but maintaining a similar risk level. By opting to invest in Treasury bills rather than keeping their funds in the Federal Reserve's reverse repo facility, they could take advantage of these higher rates. This shift in investment strategy led to a significant decrease in the balance of the reverse repo facility from a peak of $2.3 trillion in May 2023 to just over $400 billion. The government's preference for short-term borrowing, particularly through T-bills, drew substantial amounts of cash away from the reverse repo facility. Meanwhile, the government faced challenges with long-term debt auctions such as those for 30- or 20-year bonds, which will be discussed later. The stagnation in withdrawals from the reverse repo facility in recent months can be attributed to the cyclic nature of government borrowing influenced heavily by the tax season. During March and April, the government collects the bulk of its annual tax revenue, reducing its need to borrow. This seasonal influx of cash means there is less need to issue T-bills, keeping interest rates for these instruments competitive and making the reverse repo facility an attractive option for cash holders seeking low-risk, highly liquid, and relatively high-return investments. However, post-tax season, as the influx of tax revenue wanes and government spending continues unabated, borrowing needs rise. Since these needs are often met through short-term borrowing at rates now exceeding those offered by the reverse repo facility, we can anticipate an outflow of cash from the facility back into T-bills. This dynamic underlines the government's continued reliance on short-term debt instruments to manage its fiscal requirements effectively. With estimates suggesting a 60-day window until the Federal Reserve's reverse repo facility potentially depletes to zero, it's important to understand the changing conditions compared to previous occurrences when the balance hits zero without notable repercussions. In recent times, the U.S. government has encountered significant challenges in managing long-term debt issuance. The last six months have seen increasing tails at Treasury auctions, particularly for long-duration bonds like 30-year and 20-year Treasuries. A tail in an auction context indicates the gap between the expected borrowing cost and the actual higher rate secured during the auction. 
The larger the teal, the less favorable the auction outcome. This has led to fewer investors participating in these auctions, escalating the cost of borrowing for the government each time. Currently, the government heavily relies on issuing treasury bills as a preferable borrowing strategy. This is largely because T-bills, being short-term, allow the government to utilize the significant funds available in the reverse repo facility, avoiding the higher costs and risks of failed auctions associated with long-term debts. However, only about $400 billion remains in the facility, and with the end of tax season, which typically reduces the need for additional borrowing due to increased tax revenue, this buffer is quickly diminishing. This situation could lead to significant impacts on asset prices and the broader economy. As we approach this threshold, understanding how to navigate the potential market volatility becomes crucial. As the reverse repo facility approaches a zero balance, the economy faces potential liquidity constraints. This decrease in available short-term government borrowing capacity could tighten financial conditions more broadly, affecting asset prices and possibly leading to increased volatility in various markets. Such conditions underscore the need for strategic financial planning and understanding market dynamics to mitigate risks and capitalize on potential opportunities. Considering the current financial climate as akin to a river teeming with unseen risks beneath its surface, one can appreciate the dangers that arise when liquidity dries up, revealing the hidden hazards lurking in the economic landscape. This analogy aptly captures the precarious situation faced by markets when calm surfaces belie the growing risks below. Currently, the financial system is experiencing increasing instances of corporate bankruptcies signaling a worrying trend. This rise can be partially attributed to a crowding out effect where corporations find themselves unable to access the affordable capital they previously relied upon due to the government's substantial borrowing needs. This scenario can be understood through a hypothetical situation where the government offers a 20% return on treasury bonds. Such a high return would naturally divert investment away from the stock market where the risks are greater and the potential returns are lower, leading to a significant drop in asset prices. Moreover, the cost of borrowing for individuals and businesses would escalate correspondingly as they would need to offer interest rates higher than this risk-free rate to attract lending. This would further compound the financial strain across various sectors of the economy. As the reverse repo facility's balance approaches zero, the government will face increasing pressure to offer higher interest rates to attract capital, impacting both short- and long-term borrowing. With Wall Street adjusting its expectations towards maintaining or even raising interest rates rather than anticipating cuts, we're likely to see a sustained period of higher rates. This situation will not only exacerbate the crowding out effect, but also heighten market volatility. Potential consequences include flash crashes, increased market unpredictability, and a surge in defaults and bankruptcies as liquidity continues to diminish. It's in these times of apparent market complacency, when risks are mounting yet seemingly ignored, that it becomes crucial to remain vigilant and prepared. The importance of staying hedged and disciplined cannot be overstated. Protective measures and preparedness are most affordable and effective when implemented early. By the time the necessity for such preparation becomes undeniable, the cost and difficulty of implementing them will have significantly increased, often making it too late to avoid the repercussions effectively. Thus, maintaining a prudent and proactive approach to financial planning is essential, especially in times of hidden or understated economic risks. Thanks for watching. If you found this analysis helpful, please give us a like. It really supports the channel. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notifications for our latest videos so you never miss out on important insights. And if you're feeling super supportive, consider giving a super thanks. It helps us bring more content like this to you. Thanks for being a part of our community. Stay informed and stay prepared.